Today, I will be guiding you through setting up the Moonbot strategy called Moonshot. And although I will be showing exact settings in this video, I highly recommend that you make your own settings while following along with what I'm doing on the bot. As if everyone uses the same settings, then those settings will become a lot less profitable. So I highly recommend only using the settings that I choose as examples and then deriving your own settings from what I show in the video and what I'm saying as I'm talking along and choosing the settings. Now, there are two things really quickly that I just wanted to talk about before getting into this video. The first thing is that the Tesla stock did just announce record earnings. So Tesla is up around 8%. I personally am a holder of the Tesla stock, so I was very happy to see this. After the most recent crash on Tesla, this is very good to see, and hopefully we'll see Tesla going up once again. Now, next thing on Bitcoin, Bitcoin did go below $10,000 last night, and a lot of people were very scared about this. A lot of people saw 10,000 as the level to which we would be in a bull market. So last night, whenever we went below 10,000, a lot of people were saying that maybe we're going to see another crash. However, I was personally trading this move last night. I had a short at around $10,250. And whenever I saw it dip below 10,000, I was looking to exit the position. I noticed that there was actually a lot of buying below the $10,000 level. Most people would expect that, oh, if we go below the $10,000 level again, then we're just going to see a fast crash. And I personally expected that as well. However, there were really a lot of people buying. And I think that really shows how we're still in the accumulation phase. I think a lot of large investors are still really looking to buy long term. And a lot of even the retail traders right now are only looking to hold their Bitcoin. They don't really care if it goes below $10,000 short term. A lot of people are just looking to hold. And the only people selling really are just speculative traders. So Pretty much all of these moves, in my opinion, are mostly speculative traders. Aside from this crash from $14,000, I think it's just Bitcoin went up too fast. However, now this is all just speculation, and I wouldn't pay too much attention to the price at this point, as I think there's going to be a lot of volatility in this $10,000 level. However, I think long term, we are going to stay above the $10,000 level because of what I saw last night. But let's get right into talking about Moonbot and the strategy. Now, I do want to mention two things for Moonbot as well. Number one, if you would like to download a free trial of Moonbot, make sure to use the link in the description down below. And if you decide you like Moonbot and you would like to purchase it, make sure to use my 10% off code crypto advisor. It will be in the description as well. And it will be on screen right now. You get 10% off if you do decide to purchase the full version. Now, if you did just download Moonbot and you would like to use automated trading, I will show you quickly how to activate that. So the first thing you will want to do is click the menu button right here and then make sure to turn off emulation mode. This will likely be on whenever you initially download the bot. So make sure to turn that off if you would like to have live automated trading on your account. And then after you turn that off, then you will be able to start the bot up here and then start your strategy as well and auto detection, which I will be talking about in this video and how all of that works. So first, whenever you click the strategies button, you do want to click add new in order to create a new strategy. First thing you want to do is go to main and here you will want to set a strategy name. So this is just what's going to show up on the side right here. And this is whatever you are going to call your strategy. So for this video, I will call it moonshot test. And then after that, that's pretty much all you need to set right here. And then you will be able to choose what strategy you want to use. So in this video, I will be explaining the moonshot strategy. However, there are a lot of other strategies that you can choose as well if you would like to do so. So choose the moonshot strategy and then you can have some telegram settings. Um, and then this is another setting as well that's very important. The emulator mode basically decides whether you would like to have live trading or emulated trading. So if you don't want it to actually trade on your live account, then you can turn this on. However, whenever it is off, then it will trade on your live account. So that's something that's very important. Next, we'll want to go to filters. And this is what I explained before. This is the filters for what coins it will trade and when it will trade. So something that I always say is that Bitcoin is the coin that moves the entire market. And many people know that. So if Bitcoin is crashing, then a lot of the altcoin market will crash as well. And if Bitcoin goes up too much, then a lot of the altcoin market will crash. And so these are very important settings because it basically decides what coins the bot is going to trade and when it is going to trade them. So first you have your coins whitelist and your coins blacklist. So this is just any coins that you want your bot to trade or not to trade. So if you have specific coins that you only want your bot to trade, then you can put it on the coins whitelist. 
and if they're coins that you really don't like the bot trading. So for example, if you never want your bot to trade Bitcoin Cash, then you can type in Bitcoin Cash right there, and then it will never decide to trade that coin no matter what happens in the market, or if it matches all your other settings, it will never trade that coin. So in my opinion, whenever you're initially starting, I wouldn't put anything in these two lists here. I would just keep it as is completely blank. And then once you start your strategy, if you see that there's one coin specifically that's really doing bad on your strategy. So if you notice that only Bitcoin Cash is making losing trades on your strategy, then I would add it to the blacklist so that you don't trade that coin anymore. Next, you have the minimum volume and the maximum volume. So this is the minimum volume and the maximum volume of the coins that will it will decide to trade. Now, this is very important as well as there are a few different ways that you can do this. So on coins with higher volume, there's going to be more competition in order to make profit with this strategy because there are people with external bots who use market making strategies on these higher volume coins and it won't be and you won't get as many trades on these higher volume coins that are around 100,000 Bitcoin in volume. Um, you're most likely not going to get that many trades on those coins. So you can take this a few different ways. If you have a really aggressive strategy, or for some reason, if you only want to trade high volume coins, then you can set this to something like 500 and then obviously keep it at 100,000. However, for most people, if you want to try to get more trades, then going towards the lower volume coins can also be something that's interesting as well. So I would play around with these settings because they are super important. If you decide to choose the lower volume coins, then it can be a little bit more risky. You're going to get lower volume on your trades. However, you might be able to make more trades in a day. So if you decide that your strategy just isn't making any trades at all, then maybe you want to lower the minimum volume and then you might start to make some more trades over time. So this is a very important setting. And for now, I'm just going to keep it at these two levels. However, it really all depends on what coins you want to trade and how your strategy works. Next, you have the minimum hourly volume and the maximum hourly volume. Now, this is something that, in my opinion, is much more important than mid volume and max volume. So the min volume and max volume are for 24 hour time frames. However, the min hourly volume and the max hourly volume are really the only things that matter because you're going to be trading this coin within the hour. You're not going to be trading it throughout the day. You're going to trade it very, very quickly. So if the hourly volume is super high, so for example, if the hourly volume is five Bitcoin in the last hour, then that means that something must be happening on that coin, right? Because if a lot of people all of a sudden start to trade it on a very small altcoin, then maybe there's some profit to be made there. So that's another thing I would look at, min hourly volume, and then the max hourly volume, obviously it's never going to be 10,000, um, but setting it at something like maybe a hundred or a thousand could be good. And once again, I would play around with these settings because they are super important as to deciding what coins to trade. Next, you have the delta of the coin. Now, this is another very important setting and they all sort of do the same thing, but it's just looking at different time frames, which is the exact same thing with the volume. So the delta is how much it moves within a certain period. So the price at the beginning of the period compared to the price at the end of the period. So if the price moved 0%, within three hours, and that is the minimum it would have to do in order to be traded. And you can set this to negative as well. So if it moves down 2% in three hours, then maybe you decide to trade that. So it's all up to you. Obviously, you do want to try to stick to coins that are uptrending. So maybe try to set something like 2% um, in order to trade uptrending coins within the three hours. And then you have the 24 hour time. And this doesn't matter as much as I said before, but obviously you don't want to trade something that is super dead that is downtrending a lot. So I would set this to something like negative four as if a coin's going down 4% in a day, that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be on a long-term downtrend, maybe it's just correcting. So that is what I would set it to. And then the 24 hour max. So 24 hour max is also something that's very important because if a coin is moving too much within 24 hours, then maybe you don't wanna trade it because it's too risky. You could lose a lot of money on that specific coin. So an example would be if there's a coin that has a pump and dump on it and maybe it jumps 100% in one second, then you don't wanna trade that because once it crashes, you don't want your bot to be buying that coin. So that is why the setting is important as well. I personally wouldn't trade anything that's over 50% profit in a day. 
And then here you have a drop down menu for what you decide the next delta is going to be. I like to set this to something that's a lower time frame so then I can decide how much of a change in price within a very small time frame I want to trade. So I would set this to something like one and then maybe a maximum of 8% because if a coin's going up more than 8% in 15 minutes, then it's likely a pump and dump. So those are really what you're looking for in that. And then next, this is another very important one, the change in the Bitcoin price. So as I said before, if Bitcoin's moving down a lot or up a lot, then the entire altcoin market is crashing. So you don't wanna trade altcoins. So this is the hourly rate on how much Bitcoin changes in an hour. Now, I personally would set this more to around 4% as I think if it's around 5% in an hour, then it's likely that Bitcoin is going to make a larger move. And then the 24 hour, I would set to around 8% or maybe 6% down and 8% upwards as if it moves too much within 24 hours. Then once again, all the altcoins would be crashing. Then the five minute, this is another important one, I would say around negative three. And if it goes up more than 5% in five minutes, then I probably don't wanna trade altcoins. You can maybe in turn change that down to four. Then you have the entire market. So this is the average of all the altcoins. I personally wouldn't change this too much. Um, and then you have some more filters down here. These are more advanced settings. You don't necessarily need to use them or change them. However, you can read more about them on the wiki and I don't wanna to spend too much time going over all of the super advanced settings. Now, next you have the buy conditions and this is fairly simple. All you have are a couple of settings and this is basically just to decide how much you are going to trade per order. So you have the max active orders. So this is the max number of different coins that it will be trading. And then the order size is how much it will be trading per coin. So for example, since I have 10 max active orders with a order size of 0.01, then in total, I will be trading 0.1 Bitcoin with all of the orders on the bot. Now you have auto cancel buy, and this is just how long until it cancels the buy order if it doesn't get filled. I recommend setting this at around 180 or 120, but once again, it highly depends on your strategy. If you are doing something that's a little bit more aggressive, then maybe you do want to cancel it a bit sooner than that. However, it all depends on your strategy. Multiple orders is an add-on to Moonbot. You do have to pay extra if you would like to use it. However, personally right now, I'm not using multiple orders as it is a more advanced strategy, and I would only use this once you perfect your basic strategy. Next, we have the sell order. So this is something that's very important. This is what is your strategy trying to do? So Moonshot sets an order right below the current price and it stays there at a certain percentage in order to try to catch dips. So most likely you're going to want to try to make a very small amount of profit, something like 0 0.8 or you know 0 0.7, something that's very, very quick so that you're not trying to sell too high above the current market price. Now. This also depends sort of how your strategy works. If you're looking to buy on a larger dip, maybe you want to change this to a larger amount. If your stop loss is super low, maybe you want to change this to a higher amount. This more depends on your stop loss. However, I think something below 1% would be safer as once it hits that 1% profit mark, you're gonna get some people who are quickly selling. So you wanna be careful with this. And, um, and then after that, you can decide to use this, which is scalping mode, which is more of an advanced strategy on how to exit. I personally would enable this for now. Next, you have stop loss. This is something you have to use. I would never, ever trade without stop loss on this bot. And the stop loss that I would use something to start with is around 2%. So what you're saying is I need to make around two or three profitable trades for every stop loss that gets hit. Now, you can adjust this as well. As I said before, if you notice that every time a coin goes below 1.5% loss, then it always hits 2% and you might as well set this to 1.5. So it all depends on what your sell order profit is and how much of a loss you're okay with per order, assuming it hits a loss. And so that is what I would set stop loss at. And you can use stop loss EMA if you decide to in the future. Now, finally, we have the strategy settings. This is where a bulk of the buy entry settings are going to be specifically for the moonshot strategy so once you open this up you are going to see the m shot price min and this is the 
base setting for the entire Moonshot strategy. As many of you know, Moonshot works by setting an order a specific percentage below the current market price in order to wait for a dip before entering. So this decides what percentage below the current market price the order will be placed at. So if you have it at 2%, then it will leave the order 2% below the current market price. And then if it ever dips really quickly, 2% below the current market price and then jumps right back up, then it will buy right at the bottom of that 2% dip. So if you leave it at 2%, you will be able to make some trades, you will be able to make some profit. So I would recommend leaving at 2% at the beginning. And then if you decide that you are maybe not getting enough trades, you can always lower this to something like 1.5% or 1% if you're trying to get very, very aggressive. However, at 1%, you are going to get a lot more trades. So you may have a higher chance of hitting your stop loss instead of hitting profit. So this is where it all comes down to how you are trying to set up this strategy are you trying to be more aggressive or are you fine with getting less trades in a day if you are going to make more profit in the long run so this is something that you need to decide after testing and changing around all of your settings and this is really the main strategy setting in the entire bot then you have the m shot price so this is the percentage in the current market price that it will change the value so basically over time right say the order Say the price of the market starts to go up and your order is no longer 2% below the market price, but is now at 4% below. Now, you probably want to change it because there's a much lower chance that it's going to dip 4% below the market price for that order. So I would set the M shot price to around 5%, maybe 4%. Um, and this just decides how reactive your order is going to be. So if you are trading in a market that you know uh, has a fairly fast moving price, then maybe you want to set this a little bit higher because you're going to think, well, if it moves 5% five per five upwards, I still think that maybe it's going to drop. So maybe you want to set it to something like 6 or 7%. However, for now, I would leave it at around 5%. And then the M shot minus Satoshi, this is just a protection for the coins that are low Satoshi. So if you are trading something that's like 24 Satoshis, then obviously it's you probably don't want to trade that in the first place. But this will just make it where it will be set at least two Satoshis below the current price. So you won't get screwed with that. And then you just have a couple more settings here. These are all once again more advanced settings so i recommend if you want to change all of these settings which you don't need to do initially once again right i would just test the bot the way it is right now and then adjust the settings as you get more experience with it but if you want to learn more about all of these more advanced settings which will take a lot of time to go over then i recommend you read the moonbot wiki which i will leave a link down in the description down below and now I'll just quickly show you how to start the strategy. So you want to have this little check mark next to the strategy, and then you want to click start checked, and you can go ahead and close that. And then if you want the bot to choose the pairs for you, meaning you want to use all of these filter settings that you entered in, which most people will, then you want to turn auto detect on. And then once you click the start button up here, then it will start the entire bot and you will have live trading. Although right now I don't have any Bitcoin on my account that is connected to Moonbot, so it's not trading currently, but that is how you set everything up. And that is how you set up a basic moonshot strategy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will make plenty more strategy videos in the future if you guys like them. So make sure to leave a like if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys in the next one.